Okay, here I am, back again. I've got my notepad after some really good feedback on last week's video. I'm going henceforth with the series and I'm back again with my bags video. I'm still not 100% sure what to call this series. It's kind of just a series of me reviewing all of the bags, well, all of the things, items in whatever category over the past few years. So, I don't know, maybe the title needs to change, but I just feel like it is just literally me just saying what's been a good purchase, what's been a bad purchase. Anyway, thank you all for your comments on last week's video. I have dragged out all of my most used handbags well, that have been most used over the last few years. I haven't used a handbag since March, or like a proper handbag, I've been using a tote bag. So it felt very weird kind of like getting all my handbags out and like putting them on and being like, oh yes, this is what it used to be like. Anyway, without further ado, I will get chatting about bags. I'm using a very similar format as to last week. I will start off with like my favorite bags and then I'll slowly drift into like the not so good bags and then at the very end of this video I'm just going to have a little section that will be me talking about a few bags that have been gifted. Um, I'll talk a bit about why I've put that at the end when I get to that bit and I'm also going to do the same format in that I will state the bags like price, when I purchased it and then I've just tweaked it a little bit like the categories a little bit so what I'll do is I'll kind of state the size of the bag and what I can fit in the bag and then I'll talk about the durability and the quality of the bag. Then I will talk about comfort, ease of wear, which will then kind of segue into styling. And I'll do those um, like cutaways that I did last time. And then the final bit to kind of like end each bag review, someone, this was a suggestion from a viewer and I thought it was a great suggestion. They asked, would I repurchase any of these items if they were lost or stolen and I feel like that's a real good way to end each little review is like would I repurchase it if it was lost or stolen because I feel like that would be a real testament to how good an item has been. I'm going to start with the most requested bag and my most favourite bag and that is of course the Acne Masubi. Oh it's such a beautiful bag. So I bought the Masubi, I have the Masubi in white and black and I bought the white in January 2018 in Sydney so I bought it for 1200 Australian dollars which roughly works out at about 700 pounds however this bag now retails at 850 so it has increased in price and also because I bought it in Australia I was able to claim the VAT back when I came back to the UK which made the bag even cheaper so annoyingly, Acne have increased the price of this bag, which I think is a little bit sneaky. Um, I don't like it when brands do that. Things get popular and then they increase the price. The size is the Mini. Within the Masubi range, there is the Masubi Maxi, Masubi Mini, Masubi Micro. The Maxi is like a tote version of this, and the Micro is a very small little handheld thing. So this is the middle one and it is deceivingly large. I don't know why they've called it the Masubi Mini because it is by no means mini when it comes to actually getting stuff in there. You can fit a surprisingly large amount of things in there. It's like a kind of Mary Poppins bag. I think it's because it, it's kind of like a pyramid shape almost. It starts off really wide at the bottom and then kind of tapers in so you can really pack out the bottom of the bag and then still close the top. The, I can fit all of my daily essentials in this bag and more. So I travel with like a phone, a power pack, a purse, my glasses. I normally have like a small notebook with me. And then what I do tend to do is I have one of these Aesop dust bags filled with kind of like my lip balm, like cosmetic things basically, all just like together in one. So I'm not like faffing around in my bag. Um, you can also fit a book in this bag, depending on what size the book is, obviously. If it's quite a small book, it can fit a book inside. I can, at a push, depending on what I'm carrying that day, I can get my big Fuji camera in here, which has got quite a big lens on it, but it would mean travelling without as many cosmetics or without like my power pack or something. So it kind of just depends what my day's like, but for most days, this bag is used. Like I take it down to London, 
do it just for like day-to-day -day running of errands um I take it like traveling on an airplane so it's it's quite a multi-purpose bag the only thing is, is obviously you can't get a laptop in it so i wouldn't really say it's good for work you could maybe fit like a, a tablet in here it's i think quite a versatile bag in terms of what you can fit inside it just to show you what the inside is like so you've kind of got two compartments that are separated with this zippy pouch here and there are two rather large compartments and then the top you is a uh, sealed together with a kind of popper the only downside of the design of this bag is if you kind of really overfill the bag you can't get the popper shut but if I wear it cross like if I'm having a day where it's quite filled and I can't do it up because I'm wearing it crossbody I don't mind too much because I know some people are a bit kind of conscious about their bags being open and people being able to get their hands in if I'm wearing it, it cross body and I can't do it up it doesn't phase me too much because I can quite easily just keep my arm here so no one can really see into my bag size wise great very very good this cross body strap by the way does adjust that uh, actually this is maybe a downside to the bag this is ver a very fiddly system but a very secure system I like this this is not coming off whatsoever but it just you kind of have to unpop these and the leather's very stiff and yeah then trying to like pop them back on again it's that's quite frustrating durability and quality so uh the first year that i had this bag i was so over cautious with it i really kind of like molly coddled this bag i it would go in its dust bag every night i'd clean it weekly I was always very really conscious about putting it on the floor and like people brushing past it or like knocking it against things. I just was quite worried about ruining it. And that was nothing to do with my faith in the quality of the bag at all. That's just m my nature. I, I think because I'd, it was the most I'd ever spent on a handbag and it was just, I was besotted by it. I mean, I still am, but I just, was so over cautious because I had spent so much on a handbag and I was just like I just don't want it to I don't want anything to happen to it so I was really 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 precious over it and then I think after like the about a year I was like right okay I've been very very precious with this bag I think I can relax a bit more with it now you know I think I can put it on the floor I think I can just you know not worry about too much if someone bangs into me or if I bang into a wall or something with it and so there is some wear to it. I mean, I have used this bag. I do, I'm not even exaggerating when I think I used this bag every day for nearly two years. There is a point, like I was scrolling through my Instagram to try and just double check that I hadn't missed off any handbags. And there's a point on my Instagram feed where it's just Masubi, Masubi, Masubi. I didn't wear any other bag apart from this bag for nearly two years straight. So understandably, there is some wear no tear though we don't have any tears there's just some wear and that is in the corners here where it's just got a bit dirty and some of the leather the kind of like white i guess coating that's on it has peeled away but not massively and like i said like i've had this bag for over two years now you know that's only really appeared in the last maybe six months of use apart from those corners where there's just a little bit of wear there has not been there's no scratches on it because it's a it's it's got texture to it you probably can't see on the camera it looks very smooth but there is a slight grain to the leather which is always i find much better in terms of durability you get less scratches as opposed to like a smooth leather one slight issue that you can't really see unless you really really kind of like examine it the bag so the, the the way the leather has been cut the edges are bonded i think that's the correct term it might not be but they are bonded or coated with this kind of like beige i don't even know what that is almost like paint and it's cracked it hasn't peeled off though it's just cracked and you can't really notice it from afar because it's only happened on this the opening and it's only happened on the handle so where I'm 
putting my hand in and out and where I'm constantly holding the bag, that bonded edge has cracked. But like I said, it hasn't peeled off and it hasn't cracked too much on the crossbody strap. So I'd say durability, considering how much I used this bag and how kind of rough I was with it in recent months, I'm really impressed, like really, really impressed. Obviously with white leather, there is a certain amount of maintenance. I do clean it a lot. And to be honest, lots of people have asked what I use to clean it and I don't really use anything special. I just get a cloth with a bit of soap on and just gently buff out whatever dirt or whatever mark is on there and it comes out just fine. But apart from that, a very, very, very durable bag that is still my number one bag. Like it's still got so much life left in it. Now the black version. So I am trying to keep this, these video, this video series strictly to items that I have paid for. However, I obviously paid for that bag and you have received a very honest review of that bag. So I'm not biased when I talk about the black one because the black one was loaned to me. So I was allowed to borrow this just for like, just to kind of test out, just to wear with some outfits. I do like it, obviously, I absolutely love it. However, I don't love it as much as the white one and there's something about the white one that feels more special. I think the white one looks more, it kind of just looks a bit more interesting and a little bit more sculptural and is a bit more eye-catching. This, for me, as much as I love it, it's just a black handbag and I do think it's hard to make black handbags look really special and interesting especially because there's no there's no hardware on here apart from the bit where you adjust the crossbody so it's not it's not a standout. It doesn't stand out as much as this one. I have reached for this bag loads though. I have reached for the black version plenty of times it is just as great as the white it just doesn't my eye isn't drawn to it as much as the white but sometimes an outfit will lend itself better to the black version but i'd say nine times out of ten the white version goes with everything which kind of leads me on to comfort ease of wearing and styling it's such an easy bag to wear it can be worn obviously cross body and it's so comfortable because of how thick the strap is you can obviously adjust it to wear it like a lot longer i have it on the the highest one you'll see in the cutaways where this lands on my body um but yeah it's just it's very easy to wear it's very comfortable thanks to the thick straps also like on this shoulder oh, <laughs> this shoulder fine crook of the arm fine again i think it's just all because of this very big thick strong strap like when i've got this bag like properly loaded i do not worry that anything's going to snap i just feel like this bag can kind of take the weight of anything ease of so yeah like comfort fine ease of wearing fine styling <laughs> i did worry at first when i bought it if a white bag was going to be uh the wrong choice basically but actually it goes with you'll be surprised at how much a white bag goes with really really easy to style would i repurchase if lost or stolen with in a heartbeat 100 percent yes if i lost this bag tomorrow i would go marching to acne and i would repurchase it because i have never owned a bag that i have worn so so much Okay, next bag is the Sophie Hulm Bolt Bag. Now, quick bit of info about this brand. Sophie Hulm sadly closed business last, kind of at the start, I think it was around about September last year. Sophie has a, she has two very rare illnesses and couldn't really run the business anymore the way she wanted to so sadly at the end of summer last year the brand did close down so now 
in order to, if you want to buy any Sophie Horn bags, it is a case of hunting them down on the secondhand market, so places like Vestia and Depop. I think this bag was around the 520 mark, and I got it in May last year. This, I think the bolt bag came in two sizes. This size, which is the medium, I think, and then a larger one, which was obviously called large. It also came in two different leathers. It came in like a kind of more soft, grainy leather, and then this is a, yeah, it's like a, a shiny, smooth leather. This has been my kind of like go-to black bag, I would say more than the black acne masubi, which is quite interesting. I think maybe it's because it's got some slightly more interesting details in terms of like hardware than the Masubi. What can I fit inside? So this is the inside. There is a pocket on the inside there. You can fit a fair amount in here. It's very good if you'd like to carry a book with you. It, you can get the essentials in, but you can't really, I'd say you can't get as much in this bag as you can get in the Masubi, but it is still quite deceivingly large even though it doesn't look it again maybe it's that kind of like pyramid shape that boxy pyramid shape actually makes bags way bigger than you think they are and it's a very good one for the daily essentials and a little bit more considering the leather is shiny and smooth there is not a single scratch on this bag Nope, there's not even any wear and tear at the corners yet. But, I mean, I haven't worn a bag since March, so <laughs> this bag probably hasn't had as much wear as I think it's had. But the quality feels lovely. The hardware is really just, you know, like solid hardware. The zip feels really good quality. Like, the leather is, it isn't showing any signs of ageing at all. It still looks practically brand new I would say so durability I think great the only downside is I think the handle just feels a little bit flimsy not handle the um, crossbody strap just a touch flimsy but it doesn't feel like it's gonna break or anything but the the top handle however like very robust very nice and thick Comfort and ease of wearing, I would say, easy, really easy. It's, I wear it crossbody 99% of the time. I sometimes carry the top handle, but it's crossbody pretty much all the time, sometimes on the shoulder. So super comfortable. It sits really nicely on the body actually, because of the angle at which the bag, you know, like this kind of, slope it does sit really nicely on the body the only thing that's a little bit annoying and i think this will loosen up over time like the opening is a bit stiff so it can feel a bit it's just a bit awkward to get like undo and do up basically because that flappy bit sort of hides the zip and then you kind of have to sort of like bend it back to get the zip open so sometimes I'd be a bit lazy and leave the bag unzipped, but um, obviously do not recommend that. Styling wise, easy. Yeah, again, really easy. Just like the Masubi, just goes with everything, but just feels a little bit more special than the black Masubi. And I think it's maybe because it is that shiny leather, or maybe it's just like, you can see the zip, you can, there's a little bit of hardware, it's just like, oh, okay, there's a little bit of a something, something to it, you know? So I'd say in terms of styling, super easy. This is really easy to adjust. It's, again, an unassuming black bag. It's not difficult to style. Would I repurchase if lost or stolen? Yes, 100% would repurchase this bag. It is one that I have loved using and will continue to love using for a very very long time I think. Bag number three is going to be this bag. It is the Tulip Tote from 
Little Lifner. This comes in at £434, roughly. I just did a quick conversion. And I bought this in September 2019. So the tulip tote comes in two sizes. It comes in medium and large. This is the medium size. I was contemplating the large, but based on my height and the dimensions, I thought the large was going to be a bit too big for me. So I settled for the medium. What can I fit inside? More like what can't I fit inside? I can get everything in this bag. Umbrella, water bottle, book, camera, probably even a spare pair of shoes. It is a wonder tote. It is brilliant. Such a good tote if you want to carry a lot around with you. In terms of durability and quality, I do think this is a very beautifully crafted and quality handbag. I hadn't heard much about the brand up until sort of like the beginning of last year and then all of a sudden just saw them everywhere. So I was a bit kind of like, oh, is this going to be one of those brands that isn't actually that good a quality? But the leather is beautiful. It is smooth, so obviously you have to be a bit conscious of scratches and that. But the stitching on it is lovely. The handle is very nice and sturdy. Inside it's lined with a, just take the dust bag out, kind of like a, a canvas. You've got a very nice sort of kind of like wallet pouch inside that in it, this in itself is very very nice i like this a lot that has a very big it has a very big zip pouch and then it has two compartments here i i am not demonstrating this very well but that in itself, I was like, oh, that's really nice. And I like the way it's attached by these tabs. There is also a crossbody, well, not cross, well, you could wear a crossbody, but there is also a longer strap if you want to wear it on your shoulder. And then this closes with a button tab. It's very hard for me to judge the durability of this bag because I haven't used it heavily, I'll be honest it's it's one of those bags that because i only use it by the top handle really i only tend to carry it when i know i'm not going to have an armful of other things so it's not necessarily been my everyday bag so in terms of durability i can't quite judge it yet but there is no signs of any wear yet it's yeah i'm quite impressed with how new this still looks i've had this for nearly a year comfort and ease of wearing this is kind of entirely dependent on the type of bag that you like to wear i know some people who just want to be hands-free all the time some people like to actually carry their bags on their arm but i actually quite like just carrying my bag by its handle down by my side hence why i haven't used the strap that comes with it so it, ease of wear and comfort is kind of yeah dependent on how you want to wear a bag in terms of the handles comfort it's you know like it's not like my hand is hurting at the end of the day or anything like that and if I have heavy things in the bag I don't ever think oh what about the handle I've never ever once thought that something's going to break or that I felt like a strain or uncomfortable holding it. Styling wise, as a nice shaped tote bag, it's very easy to wear. However, I think I might have picked a slightly difficult colour. It's funny, like I thought that a white bag was going to be really difficult to wear and a brown bag would be really easy, but I found that this is sometimes a little difficult to wear. This comes in black and sometimes I'm like, oh, if I had the black, it would be way easier to wear, but then would it be a bit boring? It looks nice with navy, it looks good with black, but it's when I start wearing beigey tones, that's when I'm a bit like, oh, I don't want everything to start turning, like becoming really beige and brown and earth toned. So I think the colour has been a little bit difficult for me to style personally 
but as a shape and as a bag style I don't have any problems styling it whatsoever. Would I repurchase if it was lost or stolen? No and that is just based on that's not based on the quality or anything like that that is just based on how much I've worn it I don't feel like I've I mean I, I love the bag but I, I'm not in love with the bag you know I don't have an attachment to the bag I don't think I would be missing anything like this bag doesn't serve a purpose well apart from being able to fit a lot more in it doesn't serve too much more of a purpose than my other bags don't if that makes sense like if I was to lose this bag tomorrow I don't think I wouldn't really be missing out on anything apart from being able to carry a water bottle in my bag and I can I can live with that I would much rather have the Masubi in my life than this bag I'd say but a lovely bag nonetheless and maybe I'd feel a little bit different if it was black possibly I might have reached for it a little bit more but the brown it's it is beautiful but it's just who knew a brown bag could be difficult to style next we have Jill Sander this is the medium tassel bag I bought this in January for £625 now I'm really confused about the pricing consistency of this bag because when I was just kind of researching, just checking the price online today, some places were selling it for 520 and some places were selling it for 850. I don't know what's going on. I couldn't find it anywhere for 625 even though that's what I paid for it. It seems that the new season version of this bag is 850 but I don't know why because it doesn't seem like anything has changed to justify that price increase i wouldn't pay 850 for it but yeah I, I don't know what's going on with the price range but just to clarify i paid 65 for this this is like i said the medium size it comes in a large size and a small size so this is the middle size what can i fit inside obviously it's a interesting shape bag it's quite slim but it's also quite you know there's a large surface area there it's quite tall it's quite wide so if you pack strategically you can fit quite a fair amount in here I can get like a book my phone my purse my makeup bits my hand sanitizer my glasses I can get my essentials in there but you just have to be a bit careful that you don't overpack the bag because you don't want it to kind of like spill out that way too much it has a, again a popper popper fastener like most of the bags i've showed here have so yeah you can you can fit the essentials let's just say that you can fit the essentials in this bag durability and quality it is a beautiful bag the the leather on the tassel strap it's gorgeous it's really really soft yeah it already feels like it's worn in it's really really nice this leather though is completely smooth and it does feel a little bit more delicate I have been quite lucky there are no marks on this bag yet but I can it does feel like it could mark quite easily if any of you are familiar with the APC half moon bag this does have a slight coating to it but it's that same kind of smoothness you do worry that maybe all it would take is just like a little knock or a little scratch and it could leave quite a dent in the leather the craftsmanship though is beautiful it is a beautifully crafted bag there's lots of nice details on the bag just in terms of like little stitching details very subtle Jill Sand stamp at the top there inside there are three compartments actually which is quite good all in all it is a minimal lover's dream you know like it is so slick everything's so straight so smooth it is beautiful but I do wonder quality wise very very nice durability wise 
I'm not sure how the leather is going to hold up. It'll be interesting to see because also this kind of leather isn't the sort of leather that would get wrinkly and soft. It's the kind of leather that would get dented and just have like marks on it. So it wouldn't age, you know, you're not going to get like a patina or anything like that on it. It would just be interesting to see how this ages as a, as a shiny leather. Comfort and ease of wearing. Comfort, like I said, like this tassel is super soft. Really, really just, yep. I always wear it cross body, but obviously you could wear it just on your shoulder if you want. Bit of a pattern with my black bags here is just, I just like a nice, easy to wear black cross body bag. And I would say that it doesn't get much easier than a bag like this. In terms of styling, I really, really like what this adds to an outfit. It's so sleek and it's sometimes when I've got like a really plain outfit on like just like some nice tailored trousers and a t-shirt and trainers just pop this on and it's just that little finishing touch that just elevates a very basic outfit looks lovely with tailoring actually I think that's like my preferred way to wear it is with some nice slouchy tailored trousers but then I did wear it recently on Instagram with a kind of big oversized jumper and some slouchy jeans that was nice it's all in all like a really a real special bag that is a very very nice finishing touch to outfits I love it when a bag sort of can really bring something together whereas like with the Masubi the Masubi is a standout piece and I feel like the Masubi does the talking the Tangle bag just acts as this very discreet Kind of like undercover accessory that is like you don't your eye isn't immediately drawn to it but then when your eye catches it you're like oh now that is a lovely lovely bag kind of just sort of takes you by surprise a little bit you're like oh hello that's a lovely lovely crossbody bag you've got on there see so yeah, it kind of just like makes an outfit feel whole would i repurchase if lost or stolen yes now the reason i would is <laughs> I have only had this bag since January so in terms of like quality and durability it's really difficult to judge it on that but in terms of how the bag makes me feel like I it doesn't give me as much excitement or, or, or joy as the Masubi bag I will be honest but to be honest I don't think anything will give me as much joy or excitement as the white Masubi gave me the first day I ever saw it this bag does make me feel something I do when I wear it, I do feel really, really nice in it. And it's quite rare, I think, that a handbag does that for me, where I'm like, oh yeah, like, I feel really good in this bag. Like, I, you know, I've got nice bags. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is a nice bag. But there's, every now and then, a bag will come along and I'm just like, oh, yes. And the Tangle is one of them. It's a very unique bag and there's just something about it that I just love. So yes, I would 100% repurchase this if it was lost or stolen. Okay, next. I'm actually quite excited about this one because I think a lot of people will want this review. The Loewe basket bag. I got this in May 2019. So I've had this bag for a year. This is the medium size. I think it comes in like a smaller size and then a much bigger size, but this is medium. And it currently retails at £350. What can I fit inside? Uh, everything, really. Everything I need in this very, very easily. I was then about to, uh, I was then thinking, what do I use it for most? I used it a lot when, I use it a lot when we go away on holiday. I can get a beach towel in it rolled up quite easily, my sun cream, my sunglasses, a pair of flip flops, my purse. I can get the holiday essentials in there, but then if you're using it as an everyday bag, I think this is an excellent size for an everyday bag. It's also a very good size for grocery shopping, you know, going to the market, that kind of thing. It is, like, I, there's no denying it is a very good size bag and I can fit a I think a fly just flew past. <laughs> I can fit a hefty amount in here. Durability and quality. Now, it's a basket.
basket bag with a big leather Loewe patch on it. I don't feel like I'm getting anything different to like a regular basket bag. Like I don't, when I got this, I was like, I mean, it feels like a nice basket bag, but it doesn't feel any more superior than other basket bags that I've picked up from say eBay or Etsy. You know, it's, it's not, um, I wasn't blown away by it when I first saw it. The leather, don't get me wrong, is obviously lovely. This is obviously lovely. The, but the actual main part of the bag, the bit that you want to be good quality, doesn't exactly scream £350 to me. We have got a little bit of, you know, I feel like that's unavoidable with basket bags. So you start to get these snags and then bits unravel. But there's quite a few little bits that are unravelling. So I am very sceptical about just like why is this £350? You know, when I could literally go on eBay and type in French basket bag and get something exactly the same for like £20. The durability, so the quality, sorry, I think isn't quite there. Well, it isn't there for the price because surely you draw the line somewhere with the price of a basket bag. The durability, however, like it has held up. Um, the handles are extremely sturdy. I've not, they're, like they're not falling apart or anything. It's just this outer bit here that's starting to unravel and I'm just seeing more bits just hanging off. But then I have been, because when I have basket bags, I'm quite heavy handed with them because I'm going to the beach or I'm traveling, you know, I'm not, I'm not overly delicate with my basket bags. So I wasn't overly delicate with this. Anyway, styling wise, I mean, it's a basket bag. It is fairly straightforward. It can be worn with everything. I guess you're just limited to a season. You know, it's a very sort of spring, summer, early autumn bag. It's not something I would wear in the winter. Um, but we've seen basket bags for year after year now, haven't we? So I just feel like styling, you don't even need to think about how, how you'd wear a bag like this. Would I wear it, um, sorry, would I repurchase if it was lost or stolen? Absolutely not. No way. No way, Jose. I have other basket bags, like I said, that I've brought from eBay and stuff that are just as good. And actually, I think there are slightly cheaper brands out there maybe that are a bit nicer for basket bags. Like I've got, well, actually, I'll just show you some other basket bags that I've got. So I've got this one here from an Australian brand called Warm Store. I've also got this one from Heru, if that's how you pronounce it, which is very, very similar to the Luevo one, but obviously you can't wear it on your shoulder. I, I do have to say the straps on this are comfortable, but because of where it hits under my arm, like, the straw is really itchy on the underside of my arm and like especially in the summer if I'm wearing this without any sleeves or just with my bikini on it just it scratches and it's all itchy which is annoying but I guess you get that with any basket bag I've had that with the warm store one actually as well so yeah just my kind of thoughts on basket bags is that Loewe obviously saw a trend and hopped on it and it's been very successful because I see that basket bag in so many different colourways everywhere all the time but personally for me it is not worth the money at all. Okay a bag that was a complete flop that I have not got to hand with me because I don't actually own it anymore it was very swiftly put on Vestia Collective and waved goodbye to it. It is the Stoud Half Moon Bag. Is that what it's called? I did write it down. Yeah, it, no, it's just called the Stoud Moon Bag and I had it in the large size and it retailed for £320. I think I bought it from Matches maybe when they had a kind of 15% off code going around. <laughs> I 
terrible purchase. I will insert lots of cutaways now. I'll probably even insert a little clip from a vlog where I was raving about how much I loved the bag. It did not perform across the board. I was so, so disappointed with it. I loved the idea of it. I loved the kind of sculptural shape of it. It was beautiful. It looked beautiful, you know, stood still on its own, but it didn't perform. It was awkward to wear. It was so clunky and just like, just awful, absolutely awful. The bag comes in a small size, which I think would be way more practical in terms of like, you could wear it in the evening, like, or just as a sort of everyday bag where you're just carrying really minimal things around with you. But the big version, it just was not executed well at all. You could fit a ton of stuff in it. It was great, like in terms of getting things in it. But in terms of just like, comfort, styling, practicality, I was like, this does not deliver at all. So that has gone. That is my one big flop that I can think of. I haven't had many other bags that have performed that badly. So yeah, that, that's, that's my one terrible purchase that I would not recommend that anyone gives a try. The final bag that I want to talk about before I move on to the small gifted section is a bag from a brand called Trademark. Now, I am not sure this brand is still trading. I don't know if they still exist. They stopped posting on their Instagram around Christmas time and their website doesn't work anymore. So I don't think they are a thing anymore, which is quite sad because I really liked this brand. They were quite a small brand um, maybe they were struggling, I don't know, but because they're such a small brand and I don't think they made that many bags, this isn't really something I think you'd be able to find that easily on resale. So I won't talk too much about the bag, but I acquired it, was it last summer or the summer before? I think it was two years ago now. And it's a very special bag because I've just... I can't even put my finger on why I find it so special. I think just for me, this shape of bag at the time was very unique. Like this came out before Stoud did their kind of bucket bag and it's just so beautifully crafted. And I just love how it has a very unusual classic feel to it. Like it, it feels very classic, but the cylindrical shape is Kind of gives it that contemporary twist and it's very hard to see on camera just how beautifully crafted this bag is like the leather is gorgeous it has marked up quite a bit but that was because i just wore it so much when i first bought it you can fit a fair amount in here um i won't i won't do the full review of this bag but you can obviously wear it on your arm wear it on your hand or you can adjust the strap and it can be worn under your arm quite easily and also another little detail that I've always loved about this bag is there's a popper here and you can change the bag shape which I think is very nice so yeah just kind of like a little honorary mention for a bag that sadly I don't think you will be able to buy again or if the band maybe the brand will start trading again but yeah I just don't really know what happened to them um but it just it feels very special to me it's just one of those bags that I've just loved from the moment I had it and I don't think I'll ever let it go sadly if I was to lose it or if someone was to steal it from me I wouldn't be able to replace it I don't think because I can't for the life of me find anything about the brand anymore so yeah, just a nice little mention for a lovely bag in my collection. Okay, I'm going to move on to the gifted section now. So it's not going to be a big section, but I have briefly mentioned that I'm trying to keep these videos strictly to things that I have purchased and spent my own money on, just so that it's a fairer judgment. I feel like I can't fully judge a handbag properly if I have not parted with the cash. I can give an honest review, but I think my judgment will always be skewed because I haven't invested my money into that brand and into that bag. But I do get gifted a lot of handbags from like small young brands that 
you know, want to get themselves seen. So I have been through my fair share of smaller kind of independent companies. And there are just a couple that I really want to mention that I have been really impressed with. And the first one is Heru. Horu? Heru? Eru? Please someone correct my pronunciation in the comments. So I have one, two, three, four, four bags from this brand, which they gifted, no, sorry, they gifted three, I brought one. So I have actually invested my own money into this brand and I've brought several pairs of their shoes. So maybe my judgment on this brand isn't skewed as much as maybe 100% gifted. So you will recognize a lot of their bags from my images from online, uh, maybe just from like shopping places like Matches and net porter So they are a Spanish brand. Oh, why can't I get this open? Oh, it's because I've tied it shut. They are a Spanish brand and I believe these, all of their bags are handmade in Spain. Excuse me, this is stuck in its dust bag. Now, before I bought my Acne Masubi bag, I would say that this was one of my most used handbags. I wore this so, so much. And the third bag I have from them is the basket bag. I also have a very big canvas tote bag from them, which is, um, I actually think it's hidden under the bed right now. So I don't have that to hand, but it's this huge, big kind of canvas tote with a leather handle, le like similar handle to this. So I have three of their bags, I also have some of their shoes and I'm just really, really impressed with the quality and I do think some of their bags are quite pricey, like their really big handbags are quite expensive, but price point wise I do think they are really fairly priced considering they are handcrafted in Spain and I don't know the exact price of this specific basket bag, but honestly the quality of this basket is no less than the Loewe basket. So I feel like you're getting a really, really good quality bag with this brand. The leather is just always so, so gorgeous. And I just, I quite like this kind of leather twist on a basket bag. So I wanted to mention them as a brand because I've supported them now for well over like three years, maybe close to four years now. And even though they do very kindly gift me stuff, I just can't rave about them enough. I, I genuinely do love the brand and I really believe in the quality of the brand. And then the second brand that tend to gift me some bags, BRB, I've left them in the other room. And lastly is a brand called Wicker Wings. I have two bags from this brand. No, sorry, I have three bags from this brand, but one is currently living under the bed, but I forgot to get out. So I'll just show you these two that I've got to hand. The first one is this green wicker bag, square wicker bag with like a suede flap and then a compartment inside. There is a inside pocket as well and then inside here is the crossbody strap and then I also have the same style bag but in this smaller version in white and this is leather rather than suede and exactly the same setup inside another small little pocket on the inside there I love this brand I've been they've been very very kind to me and have gifted me several bags over the past few years and I do like a basket bag, I love a basket bag in the summer, but I've always struggled with that slightly, I guess, Parisian vibe that you get from them. And I think that's why I was drawn to Wicker Wings because you've still got that sort of summery basket bag, but it feels a bit more contemporary. It just, there's a little bit more structure. It just felt a little bit more me than a traditional basket bag. This one, surprisingly, can fit quite a lot inside. It can fit all of the essentials in. The smaller one is much more of a sort of evening bag or 
when you're not carrying much with you basically it's very small inside i love to take this one oh it's actually got a compartment on the back <laughs> just kind of noticed that how have i not noticed that before wow um i do like to take this one on holiday and use as an evening bag because yeah that, that's quite small you can't get much in there but i just i think with influencers nowadays they get gifted a lot. We get gifted a lot of things and it's very rare that you see things being worn again. You know, it's very rare that you see things being repeated. And I just wanted to show some, a couple of brands that have been gifted that I really believe in and I have continued to wear over the years. Also with Wicker Wings, I do think the price point's really, really good. I think most of their bags if not all of their bags are under £300, maybe this one comes in at like two something, but I know the smaller ones come in at under £200, which personally for me, for an independent brand that is creating handmade bags, I I do think that's a pretty good price point. It's the same with Heru, again, their price points I think are very reflective of the quality and the craft that goes into the bags. I think that is me at the end now. I have spoken about all of the bags that I think were worth speaking about. I have had a scroll through my Instagram just to check that I haven't missed anything crucial off. But I think, yeah, they, they were all the things that I felt were, that needed a review and needed a mention. I also feel like this video wasn't quite as informative as last week, so I feel like I've rushed through that. So I'm really sorry if I have. When I edit it, when I edit it together, we shall see. But I just feel like that flew by way quicker than last week's video. Maybe it's because bags are a little bit easier to talk about and I don't need to go into much detail. Or maybe I'm just getting better at not rambling. That could be it. Thank you so much for watching again. I really look forward to reading the comments on this week's video. I think next week I'm going to do dresses potentially. I'm going to move away from accessories and go into clothing. I thought about coats but I don't know if coats will be that useful for people this time of year. I know like maybe in the southern hemisphere coats might be a bit more useful but I don't know I feel like currently for me talking about dresses might be, I don't know, coats, dresses, what should I do next week? I'm leaning more towards dresses, but people might want coats. So um, yeah, let me know. And yeah, I shall see you all next week in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.